Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue talking about sedimentary environments and sedimentary rocks. So in this video we're going to talk about carbonates and their formation and this is going to correspond to section 7.11 of your textbook. So by now we know that the majority of carbonate rocks are the result of organic processes, more accurately the build-up of shelly material associated with life. So this can obviously be pieces of coral or it can be the shells of bivalves, so something like oysters. Uh, but there's also a whole range of other animals that have calcium carbonate shells and calcium carbonate skeletons. So essentially all you need to do is you need to have an environment in which you have enough life that has that have these kind of skeletons to build up a substantial layer of carbonate. So the vast majority of limestones will occur under relatively limited conditions. So most limestone formation is associated with shallow water, which is clear, so the sunlight can uh, penetrate it quite easily. The water obviously has to be warm, it has to have a normal salinity, and it's typically situated about 30 degrees north or south of the equator. So in this region, uh, north and south of the equator, essentially the conditions are going to be optimum for the formation of reefs. And these are going to be the kinds of environments in which we would expect large amounts of carbonate material to be formed. Not only as part of the reef itself, but also within the carbonate lagoon behind the reef, which is protected by the reef. So how do we go from this build-up of carbonate material to produce a carbonate rock like a limestone? Well, obviously, just like any sediment, the layer has to be uh, buried, has to be compacted, and it has to be heated. Now, as part of that process of lithification, of taking the sediment and turning it into a rock, uh, a lot of the time the calcium carbonate in the shells will actually begin to recrystallize. So the crystals that make up the shells will begin to break down, they will start to form new crystals of calcium carbonate and the growth of these new crystals will typically destroy the original fossil material. And so this kind of process is going to give us rocks like this uh, limestone that we can see here. So it's fossil free. Now what you can see here, you know, these, these cracks and these points here, that's the result of weathering. That's nothing to do with the actual rock itself. And so what's happened in this case is the original material essentially is recrystallized to give us a homogeneous and equally sized uh, limestone. Now, the loss of carbonate material, or the original carbonate material, should I say, is not always complete. Sometimes some of the carbonate material will be left behind, and we will see that in the form of fossils. So if we look here, we can see we have a fossiliferous limestone. So these are fossils of marine organisms called crinoids. And you can quite clearly see that the material around the crinoids has recrystallized to give us fine-grained calcite. However, the crinoids themselves have remained pretty much intact, and we're seeing them in the form of a fossil. So, as I said, this process of breaking down the carbonate doesn't always go all the way. Now, we've also touched on the fact that during the lithification of our carbonate-rich sediment, it will on occasion come into contact with a magnesium-bearing water. And the reaction between this magnesium-bearing water and the calcium carbonate sediment can lead to the formation of the mineral dolomite, that's calcium magnesium carbonate. And so the alteration of our limestone uh, by this magnesium-bearing fluid gives rise to another type of carbonate rock, which we refer to as a dollar stone. So... In terms of the formation of limestones, the process is relatively easy. All you need to do is simply have an environment in which you can form a high enough concentration of carbonate material. That's your controlling factor. So in terms of carbonate rocks, where do we tend to see them in the landscape? Well, limestone is often quite a resistant rock. So, yes, it's prone to reacting with water, which is acidic. That's a given. However, a lot of the time, limestone is actually quite robust, and it will tend to form topographic highs. And so we can see that here. So we can see this large limestone bluff right here. And you can see, on the other hand, the other sedimentary rocks, which by the looks of them are mostly mudstones, are obviously eroding a lot faster because the limestone is just more resistant. So it's not uncommon at all for the limestone to form topographic highs. So one of the things that we know about limestones is that they will dissolve in contact with water, especially if that water is slightly acid. 
So it's not uncommon when we look at our limestones to see the indications of this dissolution process. And you can actually see them in this sample here. So for instance, you can see this crack has been accentuated by dissolution. And you can see we have this pitted appearance, which is also the result of the rock slowly being dissolved. Now, that's important because it's one, you know, it helps to give us one of the methods through which our limestone can be weathered and broken down and turned into clasts. Now, if we take this process and take it to the extreme, we end up with what's referred to as a karstic surface. So if you look at this picture here, you can see something that looks absolutely nothing like what we've got in the picture in the middle. So you're thinking, well, how are they related to each other? But imagine a situation where this river valley here, this river valley over here, and this river valley over here are only there because they initially started off as cracks in a layer of limestone. So all of these topographic hives that we can see here are all made of limestone. And they're all part of the same layer of rock. So once upon a time, this was one solid layer. However, over time, what's happened is is the water has interacted with the limestone and it's resulted in the dissolution of the limestone. So the limestone is being steadily weathered away. And so what's happened is, is over time, these cracks have become more and more accentuated. They started off like this and then they got bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually they got to the point where you end up with a valley. And so what you're seeing here is you're seeing the leftover limestone between these cracks. So if we look here, we've got one crack coming through here one crack coming through here and another crack coming through here and so we have this triangle of limestone here in the middle which is cut by well, cut off by these three cracks either side of it so imagine these cracks steadily er eroding away over time and it would leave behind this piece of limestone in the middle which would essentially represent one of these topographic highs here so the formation of karstic surfaces is simply the result of the dissolution of limestones now, we've also touched on the fact that limestones can form in other ways. So we, we discussed travertine earlier, and that's the result of uh, fluids from deep within the earth, which contain calcium carbonate dissolved in them, moving towards the surface and cooling down. But the vast majority of limestones are going to be the result of organic processes. So a lot of them are the result of the buildup of shelly material in very productive environments like reefs and carbonate lagoons located behind those reefs. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a good day.